as the cliche goes, April showers bring May flowers. But usually what comes after is the heat and dryness of summer. <laughs> Hello again, <laughs> SA here. And before the hot weather of the holiday shows up, you should indulge in my new short story, The White Cat. A free exclusive on Substack. The links are down below in the description. Join Margot Thompson, a beautiful stage actress and recent widow who finds salvation in the form of a white cat during a night of terror. While checking out my oddball thriller, remember that my glitch series is still available at Amazon and Barnes and Noble. The links are down below in the description. While you'll find my peculiar story about a white pussy entertaining, that doesn't mean I'm out of ideas. I still have more stories coming down the pike, so as long as I don't run to any different mishaps. You'll see those stories as well. Now let's get back to the video. What do you think you're doing? I told you I'm not very bright. Let's go! You don't want me, sugar. I'm a liar and a phony, a saxophone player, one of those no-good nicks you keep running away from. I know, every time. Sugar, do yourself a favor. Go back to where the millionaires are, the sweet end of the lollipop, not the coleslaw in the face, the old socks and the squeezed-out tube of toothpaste. That's right, pour it on. Talk me out of it. <laughs> I called Mama. She was so happy she cried. She wants you to have her wedding gown. It's white lace. Yeah, that's good. I can't get married in your mother's dress. <laughs> she and I, we are not built the same way. We can have it altered. Yeah, I know you don't. I could, I'm good on level with you. We can't get married at all. Why not? Well, in the first place, I'm not a natural blonde. Doesn't matter. I smoke. I smoke all the time. I don't care. Well, I have a terrible past. For three years now, I've been living with a saxophone player. I forgive you. I can never have children. We can adopt some. But you don't understand, Osgood. Uh, I'm a man. Well, nobody's perfect. Hello again, S.A. here. A long time ago, I remember seeing this old film uh, with uh, Julie Andrews. It was called uh, Victor Victoria, along with uh, James Garner. And the story took place in, uh, if I remember correctly, it took place in the uh, 1920s. And it was about uh, a, a, a woman who uh, who was out of work to actress and she couldn't get any work, so then she decided to take a job uh, dressed up as a man. And initially it, it worked, but then she got another job where the people wanted her, even though she was still dressing up as a man, to do a stage show where they where they basically were doing uh, drag stuff. Now, of course, the thing is, people who were hiring uh, Julie Andrews' character didn't know she was already a woman because she was masquerading as a guy going out to get work. 
because when she was going out to get work as an actress, she wasn't getting any work. So when she got her character got hired, and and the, and they said, "Oh, you, we want you to do a drag show," she said, "Okay." And these people didn't realize she was already a woman. So, yeah, it was kind of a confusing kind of film. But the thing is, uh, it's one thing to uh, do a, a drag show, basically as entertainment. And doing it uh, as marketing for selling a product. Now, of course, uh, some of you probably figure, oh, who cares? The people have been doing something, stuff, uh, weird stuff in the advertising business for years. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Because believe me, I'm I grew up uh, listening to Alice Cooper. And anyone who's seen the Alice Cooper show know that uh, Alice Cooper is uh, no woman. Yeah, he's basically just a weirdo. <laughs> and of course, anyone who remembers Marilyn Manson, same thing. It's all basically a gimmick. Yeah, a guy with a woman's name uh, on stage singing. But of course, you know what you're getting. But at least in those two cases, you know what you're getting. You know, it's a dude who has a woman's name, but and it's just it's just part of the act. And indeed, uh, I remember uh, David Bowie did that for about five seconds with his album, uh, The Man Who Sold the World. Where, if, I, if, if you recall, I mentioned in a previous video, if you find the original album art, for that Bowie album, you see Bowie uh, lounging on a, a couch wearing a full length dress. And of course, at the time, Bowie used to have really long blonde hair, so well, there you go. <laughs> and if you didn't know who Dave Bowie was back then, you swore it was a woman on the cover of the album, except it wasn't, it was him. So <laughs> there you go. But in those instances, you know what you're getting. But what if you have a company or instant or any kind of business that wants to play uh, fast and loose with their audience? For example, what if you had uh, a woman who was dressing up in a man's suit uh, selling uh, Brooks Brothers suits? You would say, man, that sounds kind of odd. Yeah, it is odd. I mean, why would you do something like that? Well, let's just say this. Um, right now, I'm going to show you a snippet of a, a video by that goofy guy, Paul Joseph Watson. And let's just say this. He's, claim, uh, he's complaining about something that's happening right now, except it's not some woman dressing up uh, selling uh, a man's suit. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Victoria has finally revealed her secret, and unfortunately what at one stage looked like a redemption arc turns out to be anything but. A few years ago the fashion brand attempted to overhaul its supposedly dreadful image of featuring in its catwalk shows, wait for it, women who were thin and attractive. <laughs> Because God forbid, right? Then set about replacing them with plus-sized models. As well as notoriously annoying female soccer player Megan Rapinoe. Sexy can be coming through you. Again, the fact that I feel comfortable in it. They were then somehow shocked to discover that this didn't work and sales began to decline. So last year we were promised that Victoria's Secret was bringing sexy back. Which at the time was celebrated by some, including stupidly by me, as a big fat middle finger to wokeism. Suffice to say, that's not what happened. From this year's Victoria's Secret show... <laughs> mm, something's not quite right here, is it? After the company's chief marketing officer, Ed Razak, vowed back in 2018 to never include transgender models, Victoria's Secret's supposedly anti-woke rebrand turns out to be... 
transgender models. And while that may play well with their ESG score, given that their biggest shareholders are BlackRock and the Vanguard Group, will it help revive their flagging financials? And do they even care? After all this time, Victoria's Secret is a cop. Okay, you saw that. Now, of course, anyone who is who is familiar with Victoria's Secrets knows what that's all about. It's basically about women's underwear. And you say, okay. And, of course, women's underwear is women's underwear. And, therefore, you figure if you're wearing, if you're selling women's products, it probably helps to get a woman to sell it. Especially it's, uh, if it's undergarments, or even a dress, or even women's shoes. Yeah. But then you ask, like, ask the question, what the hell is going on over at Victoria's Secrets? And personally, it seems like uh, they're trying to put themselves out of business. Because when I was growing up, I remember Fredericks at Hollywood. And they also were selling women's uh, undergarments to say it nicely but guess what they never hired men to sell that stuff they always hired ladies pretty ladies to sell that stuff now of course I don't know if, Victor if uh, Frederick's of Hollywood is still around anymore I know that for a brief period primarily in the 80s and 90s uh, Fredericks of Hollywood and Victoria's Secret were competing each other because they were basically in the same uh, wheelhouse. But after year 2000, I never heard much from, from Fredericks of Hollywood. They may have gone out of business, so there you go. I mean, hey, it happens. I'm uh, everyone who remembers that old Detroit, Michigan uh, rock band, uh, I think it was called MP5 knows what happened to them because I remember correctly because uh, Joe Benson uh, you don't know him he's a old DJ from KLOS he famously said that uh, uh, MP5 they were like a hard charging hard rock uh, uh, proto uh, heavy metal band out of Detroit back in the late 60s and just as those guys were getting started Black Sabbath showed up and basically stole their audience. And now everyone knows who Black Sabbath is, but MP5, most people don't know who they are because they basically hit the skids and basically uh, fell into obscurity. And I guess you could say that same thing happened to Fredericks of Hollywood. Fredericks of Hollywood was basically making uh, lingerie for the ladies. And they had been around for, I think, since I think the 1960s. And then, of course, here come Victoria's Secrets in the 80s, basically steal their uh, customer list. And now people only know about Victoria's Secrets, and very few people, at least people I guess who are younger than 30, don't even know what Fetris of Hollywood is. But as you saw in Watson's video, it seems like whoever's running Victoria's Secrets now is trying to blow up the business. I mean, first they, as you saw, first they hired a bunch of plus size models, which are decidedly not appealing. And now they're hiring a bunch of men, the uh, drag queens, and or what they call it, female impersonators, doing uh, wearing their stuff. And I'm wondering, what's the matter you? I mean, seriously. I mean, I don't understand. Now, of course, as you saw in Watson's video, he said, oh, they were just trying to keep up their ESG score. And I'm thinking, who cares about that? I mean, Victoria's Secrets existed long before ESG and woke nonsense and all this other stuff. And if they just simply stuck to their guns and their client list, they would have came out through all the nonsense okay. And therefore, the only thing you can conclude is that a bunch of woke weirdos have somehow hijacked the company. And indeed, we've seen this before. And indeed, uh, I mentioned in previous videos, uh, you know, Jeremy from the Quarry mentioned how this happened to John Deere. And, oh my God, Bud Light. 
Yeah, remember Mulvahey? Yeah. <laughs> How can you forget that clown? And of course, uh, damn uh, Harley Davidson bikes. Yeah. And now we're seeing it again with the uh, damn Victoria's Secrets. And of course, as German Quartering once said about this kind of nonsense, these people who are getting into these uh, these companies, these publicly traded companies, I might add, and are basically pushing all this woke nonsense uh, with drag queens and uh, ESG, and, oh my God, DEI. Blah, blah, blah. It seems like they don't care if they're going to put the company out of business. They're just using the company to push the message. Or as Tim Pool calls it, their non-theistic religion. And I'm thinking, yeah. Because, as I mentioned in a previous video, this happened already with uh, the news media. I mean, good grief, you got so many woke weirdos inside these news organizations. Uh, and, and what happened to these news organizations? They're all pfft, falling by the wayside. I mean, people don't watch CNN, oh my God, MSNBC. And, oh my God, they don't read the New York Times or even Washington Post anymore. I mean, Washington Post is going out of business. At least they will as soon as Jeff Bezos pulls the plug. Because I'm pretty certain Jeff Bezos... Uh, he's probably noticed that ever since he bought that newspaper he's been spending more and more money trying to keep it afloat but I don't want to digress too much but now we've seen the same nonsense happening with Victoria's Secrets and then you say why does this stuff keep happening because uh, these people uh, as uh, Tim uh, mentioned in one of his videos these people worm their way into these businesses, usually by way of the HR department, and they start hiring their woke confederates. And then before you know it, you have a situation like you had at the New York Times, where if I mentioned a previous video, uh, Tom Cotton, who is not a liberal, wrote an op-ed about the George Floyd riots, which was scathing to say the least. And then half the damn... Uh, uh, newsroom revolted and got the damn uh, the man who ran the op-ed page fired. And indeed, I remember when that happened, Tim Poole mentioned in one of his videos that the, that the New York Times was culturally captured and that the left, these radicals, were basically wearing the New York Times as an institution, as a skin suit. In other words, anyone knows anything about uh, uh, a, the phrase wolf in sheep's clothing knows what I mean. And I guess you can probably say that's happened now with Victoria's Secrets. Apparently, despite the fact that Victoria's Secrets was losing money, first with the damn uh, plus size models and that damn stupid uh, uh, soccer player woman, which I'm not going to get, uh, not going to mention her name. Uh, they are doubling down this time with the uh, with male impersonators or what they call them trans whatever uh, going on the runway show showing off uh, their uh, the damn uh, lingerie which is for women not men so I guess people are not gonna be happy until they basically tank the company and it goes out of business which is a shame because have to I have to confess I've looked through a Victoria's Secrets catalog more than once and I have to admit I personally would never buy that stuff but I have to admit it looks pretty nice it's too bad that uh, the people who are wearing it in those catalogs now are all dudes just saying. Well, that's all I got to say about how Victoria's Secrets, like the New York Times, is being worn as a skin suit by these radical leftists who took it over. That's my opinion.